Okay, so hello, Anna. Um, I hope you're doing well. Yeah, thank you very much. We're good. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So just before we start, it'd be helpful if you could just introduce yourself to everyone, please. Okay, so hello, everybody. I am Anna David, and I am the founder of Comedy and Confidence Training Centre, and I also work for the EY Foundation, helping support social enterprises and social entrepreneurs get to where they should be. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's so much to choose from that. So should we just start firstly about your, I think you just said there about um, comedy and confidence, which I think mm-hmm. sounds really interesting. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what that is? Um, so yes, basically I founded Comedy and Confidence probably like my whole life um, it was my dream since I was 14 years old um, because I experienced a lot of barriers in education and I promised myself that I would do something that young people wouldn't feel the way that I felt and um, so I created a whole course that uses comedy to combat mental health and gain confidence um, it's five years old um, and I accredited it in 2016. So it's the only qualification of its kind in Europe. And then last year we developed it online and added in mental health qualifications, creative industry qualifications and made it just a really bigger programme. Um, and basically what we believe is that everybody can learn, but not everybody can be taught the same way. And uh, education is given in two definitions. One is a systematic process and the second one is an enlightening experience. And I believe that it can be both and both can be equally measured. So, yes, so that's what we do. Basically, we come and we laugh and we learn um, and we get people to realise how brilliant they really are. Yeah, I feel like, firstly, the fact that there's a qualification, I was like looking up about what you've done and I saw that it's, is it SQA accredited, is that right? Which yeah. is just amazing because, like, I think so often at school you're taught about very, you know, particular subjects, whether that's history, geography, maths, but you're not taught about lots of, like, a skill as such that can be utilised within every single kind of topic or aspect mm-hmm. of your life. So I think, yeah, I think that's just amazing and I hope that there is more of these kind of courses that come out because I think this is what would make the biggest difference to young people going forward you know like these are the skills that you will take forward at the end of the day which I think is like amazing so no honestly it's so good so obviously mental health must be quite an important thing for you Um, and why was it that you chose to want to speak about mental health and all these kind of issues um, well, I'm very honest about this, um, because I had a big mental breakdown when I was younger. Um, basically, well, I don't know if you would call it like a, like a mental breakdown, but I, my dad died um, in grief. Grief is one of the biggest ones because it can creep up on you. Um, and sometimes when, when you think you're dealing with grief, you're really not. Um, and so, yeah, my dad died when I was really young and I really didn't I just didn't cope well with it and so I spent a lot of years looking at the neurological development of the brain and how this reacts to traumatic experiences how it reacts to grief um, especially around like your developmental and adolescent stages because obviously we go through so much like changes your brain isn't fully developed until you're like 24 25 um And so, yeah, it was using like my own experiences. And then I had a lot of like friends, family, different people that had experienced different mental health. And I'm now, well, by the time this goes out, I'll be 34. Um, But like, I'm now 34, but even even just going back 10, 15 years, it was a totally different thing. Um, Like people really didn't, not that they didn't understand mental health, but now, I think nowadays people really realise that it's your health your mental and physical health are intertwined. It's not two things, it's one thing. Um, And so, yeah, that's why I wanted to look into it and that's why I wanted to explore different ways of coping. And I always was quite dramatic and and into the arts. Um, And then my mum put me into the arts and then I became a professional stand-up comedian. And then I really loved like seeing how people reacted. 
and after gigs and stuff people come up to me and they would say like oh you made me feel really good because I was always really honest like about like just my life I am um, and so yeah so then I got really interested in it and then I studied a wee bit of sociology as well around just how people work yeah no I think it is interesting and when you say about like adolescence brain as well and how it's develops like I think I'm pretty sure the brain develops from the back and then forwards so like you know like the, your frontal brain is obviously what's in charge of you know making decisions your inhibitions all that kind of thing which is obviously why teenagers are like I, reckless or that kind of thing and that's why as well teenagers are teenagers like yeah. that's because the brain literally isn't developed <laughs> and, and, when we put, and like that we put them under like immense um pressure I believe yeah. um like that and like making decisions at like 15 16 like what you're going to do for the rest of your life and that's it I'm like your brain actually cannot make that decision it's <laughs> not that they're being they're not being like rude they're not being like cocky or whatever word she would like to use around it they literally their frontal lobe is not fully there <laughs> so um so yeah so no, I completely agree. And like when you're saying about the kind of mix of mental health and like physical health, I'm pretty sure it's like 95% of your serotonin is produced in your gut. So there's like a particular nervous system in your gut, which I just think is insane. And I think there'll be a lot more signs that will come out with linking like your gut flora, how well you are and your mental health. And I think that's like starting to come out a little bit more. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Completely, so, yeah. sorry to interject, but I got right into chiropractor mm -hmm. years ago, um, and that was that, like, my chiropractor was saying to me, obviously, your brain, which, like that, I just moved my hand, that's my brain telling me to do it, this is my brain telling me to say these words, he's like, your spine and everything is basically, like, your hard drive, and it stores and all of that, um, and then the book, The Body Keeps Score, uh, if you've not read it, read it, well, it's read it honestly and that's what it's all about is how in life all your experiences your body keeps score mm -hmm. um and so uh, there's so much like your body is totally linked mm -hmm. um but yeah I'm excited because there is quite a lot of science now coming up around that um mm -hmm. so yeah I'm excited so I'm not a scientist by the way <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. you just like it I know it's interesting I was going to say so why do you feel that mental health is so important in the first place honestly because the voice in your head is with you every single day mm -hmm. and when that voice isn't when that voice isn't being nice and kind to you it can become a real battle um and people don't understand it's not that people don't understand don't want to say that people sometimes cannot appreciate that things like anxiety so we all get anxious I'm anxious right now doing this for you right because I'm like I'm on a screen and they look okay, like what's like all of that. But when you have proper real anxiety that you can't go to work or you can't go to school because you just can't, and people sometimes can't really understand how people could feel like that. And even with things that have happened over like the past couple of years, like Robin Williams, Caroline Flack, these big profile cases of people that just weren't coping and people say but why weren't they coping and it's like because you in your life you're always with you and you're always going to be with you and if you aren't nice to you and your brain voice or whatever isn't being nice to you it, it can really affect things um and so sorry I totally forgot what the question was I've not answered it properly no no you did you just I just asked like why mental health was important you just said because it's like always with you always accompanies you and I think I think at the end of the day unless somebody has been through like a mental health experience they're never going to fully like appreciate it at the end of the day like you you can you can be empathetic but you're never going to know what it's like you know to wake up and feel a particular way or go to sleep and just wish that you weren't there like at the end of the day nobody can feel like that unless they've been through it themselves so yeah no, I completely get what you're saying but I think there is a positive in that mental health is being viewed in a better way um have you noticed a difference first I was going to say you do not look 34 I just thought you were 25 <laughs> no, I'm not or yet I'm 34 on Sunday oh, so I by, the time, I was like... by the time this goes out I will be 34 really? no that's fine so yeah but how do you think it's like changed from when you're young to now well I do think now mental health is more 
people speak about it more and actually and I know you probably shouldn't say this but a positive of COVID was because everybody's mental health was put on, on the line so to speak and so I think as well that really brought it home to people and people were having more open conversations like in their workplace with um, their peers with their family um, so I think now there is a lot more knowledge around mental health um, and I think people are much more aware of it um, so I do think that is really really good um, but I do think there is still quite a lot of stigmatization so like I was saying about like the high profile cases like some people do say oh, but what have they got to worry about and you're kind of like, well, sometimes it's not just worrying about stuff. Sometimes it is like that anxieties. It can be paranoia. It can just be depression. It can be just unhappiness. But with mental health, we've all got mental health. And that's what I was saying there about, like, right now I'm feeling quite anxious mm -hmm. because we're doing this. But that doesn't necessarily mean I have anxiety. It, it can develop. Mm -hmm. So it's about educating yourself and knowing, right, when am I having a moment? Mm -hmm. and where have I got a problem mm -hmm. and then when you do have a problem it's about developing healthy coping mechanisms mm -hmm. um, and I say this a lot like I do loads of speeches on like well-being mm -hmm. well-being is what works for you if you want to run five miles and drink kale every single morning brilliant you go <laughs> right dead, right you do that and I will be the first person to champion you but see if what you need is to sit in a McDonald's car park yeah. and have a cry do that because it's what you need and it's about allowing yourself these moments mm -hmm. and as well with everything that goes on in life we do get chaotic we do get busy and we forget about ourselves mm -hmm. so always make some time for you and do what it is that you want to do like 30 minutes a day it doesn't even have to be like a big walk or a big hike or whatever color a book for a pal dance I dance all the time. I dance. Yes, I think right. Always oh. yeah. <laughs> around oh, the house. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. the neighbors must be like, oh, are we show. <laughs> like, so I dance in my kitchen. Like, and honestly, I think all my neighbors see me. But that's it. I just jump out and have me dance. Yeah. Um, I also do like laughter yoga therapy. So I do that every day. Um, but yeah, do what's right for you because your well being and your mental health is yours. Mm -hmm. And you're the person that probably knows you enough but in saying that when you are developing a, pro a, a problem do always try and seek help because mm -hmm. sometimes people wait too long um so yeah yeah no I think it's about also like accepting that it's okay to if you do have a mental health you know condition I think a lot of the same people maybe are in like denial of a particular thing they're like you know what it wouldn't be me or maybe they don't feel like they have a right to have that have a condition you know what I mean like sometimes it's like oh, well, like, nothing's happened to me, you know, like, how how should, why should I feel sad or anxious about this? So, yeah, no, I think that's definitely important yeah. to kind of note that as well. And um, one thing I was thinking about a lot was, like, the influence of, like, social media and how that affects mental health. And I was just wondering what you thought about it. Oh, Abigail, Abigail, are you sure? Are you sure? I'm um, <laughs> What do I think about social media? Number one, I don't think it's social. Um, I don't see it being like LinkedIn's quite positive and encouraging for me personally. Um, but it might just be my settings are wrong or whatever. Um, but I don't think it is. Nine times out of ten, I don't think it's a nice place to be. Um, and I think as well, what everybody has to really remember is what people do is put up their showreel and people don't put up like well some people do but there's a lot of fakery on socials um and there's a lot of just things that aren't real like there's loads of stuff that comes out like you'll have seen it as well during covid and stuff like people say oh this was in the news or this has been printed but actually when you really look at it it's not from a reliable source mm. um and i do think that social media can be negative and in regards to young people i think that it can be very negative um and these influencers and i do put that like this um sometimes i think that some of them, don't get me wrong, are great. Like, I follow some on, like, Insta and Twitter, and they're very positive and proactive. But other ones are basically showcasing a lifestyle that I think I would really want. I really would like to know how you obtained that. Um, and when when I say that, I mean really obtained it. 
I don't mean what you put on socials. I mean, how did you really like do that? Um, and I think we have to be very careful around what, when we are like talking about social media and big influencers, what is the, for me, I'm like, well, what are you trying to influence on? Yeah, like, because yeah. if you're influencing I, on, mm-hmm. you're influencing me on a policy change or a task of poverty or engage, like then brilliant absolutely like I would buy into that yeah. 10 million times mm-hmm. um but then in saying that a lot of young people have made successful careers on social media so I think yeah that's great but I do think it it, it can be a it can be quite a negative world um yeah. and I do think that sometimes we need to realize that even although we do live in a virtual life like us the now but I do think that we shouldn't lose human connection um, mm-hmm. and with social medias I do think that you should try and I did that during Covid like try and program it more to be around yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you can yeah it's like the social the, it's kind of problematic because what you search and look at Instagram will show you so you can do it to your benefit wherever you're looking at positive things but for example, if someone's feeling insecure about themselves and you know they see girls that are you know in a bikini or all this kind of thing, it's been airbrushed. That's going to keep coming up on their feed, which is going to make people feel worse and worse and worse. And like that's one thing that I think is quite difficult is that say years ago when like the internet didn't exist, you might see one or two people on the street that you're like, oh, they're quite good looking or or they're really successful. Whereas now you genuinely see like thousands. Or a thousand, you know what I mean, in one day, which I just, I don't think our brains are like programmed to deal with that kind of comparison all the time, um, yeah. which is really hard. Like I know for me, a lot of the time I've gotten a lot better, but at the start I had to be like, no, I'm just going to unfollow them. Like it's not helping me whatsoever. Like what am I actually getting from this? And like when you said about the influencing, like that really struck a chord because I know a lot of the times, you know, I see like girls and boys whatever that have made like a really good career uh being like an instagram influencer which is fair enough but a lot of the time i think that a lot of space like that is getting taken up with that rather than like issues which could like genuinely make like a really big difference to a lot of different people's lives and like awareness so that's why it's like one thing that i'm kind of like a mixed emotions about it all to be honest with you yeah no that's that's exactly how I am that's fine I was going to say just to like sum up just like to finish this last little bit of mental health what are some kind of pieces of advice that you've been given or you would give to someone to try and help their mental health um so honestly my core advice is be your best friend Mm -hmm. and that's a lot harder than it sounds um because I spent quite a lot of my life hating myself but just be your best friend and get good coping mechanisms around when when you do know like if you're not feeling right and always speak to trusted people so like that with social medias and stuff maybe don't reach out to people you don't know um like pick up a phone to your friend or somebody that like that you know um also laugh I laugh every day just I laugh at nothing like it's something that it doesn't have to be funny for you to laugh so just like have a laugh and just uh, really accept yourself because who you are today isn't going to be who you are tomorrow it might not be who you are in a year and you never know what's going to like happen so just enjoy the excitement of it all um and yeah just be you and just say yeah that's okay because there is only one of you so just be you because you're the best version of you that you can be and you're enough. I tell myself that every single day. I say you're enough. I, I don't feel like I am, but I say it. <laughs> so that, I over time, it. yeah, exactly. Over time, you will like feel like that. 